I'm going to start with the tiramisu charlotte. And in order to make that, I'm going to make some lady fingers first that are going to be the bonding agent. They're gonna hold the charlotte into the mold. Uh, if you don't wanna do this part, you can go to the supermarket and you can buy your lady fingers, but I thought it would be fun to make our own today. So for the ingredients, I need a half of a cup of sugar separated into quarter cups, you'll see why, four eggs separated, the yolks from the whites, two thirds of a cup of flour with one eighth of a teaspoon of salt. We're making chocolate lady fingers, so I'm going to add three tablespoons of dark cocoa, and then we're gonna need some vanilla, which I'll get later. So let's start. We start off with the egg yolks on our mixer. One of them broke, so I have to really get it out of there. Terrific. And one quarter cup of the sugar. Now what we want to do here is we're going to beat this for a few minutes until it becomes pale yellow and ribbony when it comes off the beater. So this is going to take a couple of minutes. That's about three minutes or so. You can see how it's lighter in color and just kind of folding over itself. So we want to put this aside. Scrape down the sides a little bit. And then in another bowl, which I happen to have, if you don't, then put that in another bowl, wash the bowl, and start over again. This can be done very easily by a hand mixer also. Here are the four egg whites. And I'm going to start those on the mixer with the whip attachment. You can do this but with a handheld mixer also. And once it gets uh, fairly stiff, I will add the other quarter cup of sugar until it gets really stiff. This will take about three or four minutes. Take a look at those. Okay, I would say those are done. Okay, now we'll go back and get our egg yolk mixture. And what we're going to do is we're gonna put in about a third of the whites. This is going to loosen up the yolks a little bit. Now we don't wanna beat this up really hard. We do want to just kind of fold it in. This first addition you can be a little bit rougher with. The next ones you want to be much more careful. Okay, get way down to the bottom of the bowl. Make sure you get all the yolks up into those whites. You don't want to have, you don't want to find a big lump of something on the bottom of the bowl when you're done. That's just not too cool. Okay, add another third of the whites. Fold this one a little bit more carefully. By the way, my oven is heating up into 300 degrees. What we're essentially making here is a sponge cake batter, but we're gonna shape it into fingers. Okay, not too much, don't work it too much. Now the rest of the whites. By the way, if it's a rainy day, this type of recipe does not come out that well because the moisture and the egg whites, they don't like each other. And now we have our two thirds a cup of flour with that eighth of a teaspoon of salt in here. And we have our three tablespoons of cocoa. What we're going to do is put the flour and the cocoa in my sifter. And we're just gonna, I'm gonna take this out for a minute before it gets too dirty. I'm just gonna sift this over the top lightly. This just helps take out any lumps that might be in there. See, I got those little pebbles left in there. You wanna make sure that you don't 
put those into your mixture. What you could do is with the back of your hand, you know, break them up, but I'm just going to leave those out. Now, at this time also, you want to add some vanilla. And I want to talk about this just for a second. What I did was I went to one of those big box stores recently and I bought some vanilla beans. They had a bubble pack with two vials in it like this. Each one of these tubes had five Madagascar bourbon vanilla beans, some of the best. And uh, so you get 10 vanilla beans, five and five, for under $12. That was a really good price. What I did was I took them home and I took three of the vanilla beans and I cut them open. I put them into a jar, like there's a canning jar with a tight lid. For the three vanilla beans, I put halfway up with just regular vodka. You can use vanilla vodka or unflavored vodka, but don't obviously use raspberry or anything like that. This is three days old. And every week or so, you just kind of go like that and put it aside. Keep it in a cool, dry place, not near the stove, not to get cold. In a cupboard is fine. This is some vanilla that I made about six months ago. And it smells wonderful. And I need a half a teaspoon of vanilla in here. But I'm going to put just a little bit more because I love the flavor of vanilla in this. Wow, that's nice. And when I made this, when I used three vanilla beans and filled this size jar all the way up to the top, so I had quite a bit of vanilla in there. So now, now we're folding. A little bit harder to fold this part because cocoa doesn't like to fold that well. So you're going to have to do it just a little bit longer. If you wanted to and you wanted to keep these vanilla, just leave the three tablespoons of cocoa out. really doesn't want to blend that well, but persistence pays off. Just be gentle. If you see any white streaks, you still want to go. It won't be the end of the world if you leave a white streak in there, but everybody will wonder where that one zebra striped lady finger came from. Okay, let's move this aside. And let's take out my sheets. I have two sheets here. I'm not really sure how many I'm going to get. And what I need is some sort of piping bag. You can have, this is a disposable one that I buy. You can use a Ziploc bag or some other kind of freezer quality bag because you're going to be piping. You don't want those seams to burst. And what I put on the end here was just a large open tip. And to help me fill this bag, because a lot of people do this, they hold it like this and they fill it up, but my bowl starts riding all over the counter. So I do this. And I can use two hands now. Before I start doing that, I'm gonna show you what I did. What I did was the pan that I'm gonna use, the Springform pan, has a three inch side. So what I did was I measured onto my parchment paper, three inch wide spa spaces, so it's a template. And I just drew lines, turn it down so you don't get the pencil marks in your food. And then I can basically pipe my lady fingers to the size of my pan. So let's get this mixture into the bag. You can easily double this recipe if you really want to because you could freeze the lady fingers for a second time use. I mean, if you're gonna to go to all this trouble, make a double batch and you'll have enough lady fingers for a batch another time. Okay, well, I don't need this anymore. And now we're going to pipe, whoops, losing some, just about inside that template. These will spread a little bit, so you want to leave probably two or three inches between each lady finger. And 
and these will go into that 300 degree oven for approximately 18 to 20 minutes. You want them set, obviously not burned, 300 being a low oven. Now if you do these with vanilla and you don't use the chocolate, before you put them in the oven, take a little sifter and some confectioner's sugar and cover the top and you'll have a crunchier lady finger. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave them plain because I don't want white stripes on my chocolate cookies. Well, I got my two pans done. I've got a little bit left over. I'm actually going to get another sheet and do those extras and I'll do that later off camera. Um, if these do bake together and they touch each other, no problem. Just, just cut them up because you're going to fit them into a pan and they're going to be wonderful. So into the oven for about 18 to 20 minutes. Here are our lady fingers out of the oven. It smells so chocolatey. It's wonderful. I've got the other pan over there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let these cool on the racks for about five minutes and I'm going to take them off and put them on the wire rack directly and let them cool absolutely completely before we can move on any further. So I will do that and I'll see you in a bit. Now I'm going to get the pan ready for the tiramisu Charlotte. I have my springform pan that I showed you earlier and I've lightly greased the inside of it. In my little dish here I have some coffee and here are the cooled off lady fingers. This sometimes can be a bit of a challenge because sometimes they don't want to stay where you put them and they fall down because they have very little support. But I just keep pressing them in. Some of them are going to be bigger than others I think. And I'm just going to keep going around until I fill the whole pan. And then with any leftover cookies that you might have, put them on the bottom. And then any other leftover cookies, well, those are for us. So there's our pan that's ready. I'm going to put this aside and go get all the ingredients to make the filling and then we'll put that together. Well, the pan is ready for our tiramisu charlotte. Now we have to make the filling. In my bowl here, I have six egg yolks, and I'm going to add to it one cup of regular granulated sugar. And I'm going to blend those well. And then what I'm going to do is I have a pot on my stove with some water in the bottom of it, about a quarter of the way up, and it's just simmering. It's not um, boiling. I'm going to put this bowl over it and I'm going to cook this all over that heat for about eight to 10 minutes to warm them. Then I'll come back and I'll show you how to finish up the filling. All right, our eggs and sugar have been cooking over that water bath for close to 10 minutes. Um, very warm. What that's going to do is it has dissolved the sugar and it's warmed up the eggs so that now when I go to beat them, they'll beat up really nice. Okay, I'm going to beat this on the mixer until they get lemony colored and a little bit more in volume. They've gotten a lot lighter in color. I don't know if you can see that from there. And they're ribbony and they're thicker. Now to that, we're going to add one and a quarter cups of mascarpone cheese and blend that up with it. In this dessert, there really is no substitution for the mascarpone. I don't think so anyway. Blend that up. All right, what you want to do is make sure that there's no big lumps from the mascarpone. All right, 
take this out. And we'll put this aside for a minute. I have another bowl here that's been chilling in the refrigerator along with the whisk and one and three quarter cups of heavy cream. And we're going to beat this until it's thick. Stiff peaks. There we go. Now, it's just a matter of blending the two together. As with anything, when you're doing it, blending two different mixtures together, you go with one third into the heavier mixture. And that kind of loosens it up and prepares it to accept the more aerated cream later. So just kind of get it in there. Now, put the rest of the cream in. and then fold it in very, very carefully. Okay, that's about, let me just make sure. I don't want to have any big white streaks. Okay, now we go back over here and one of our soldiers fell down. Put him back and get our mixture in there. going to be like a light cheesecakey tiramisu. Spread it out, even it out. Now again, this is going to be covered and it needs to go into the refrigerator for at least four hours to set up. And when it's done setting up, I will show you some cool decorations. Now what I did on the tiramisu is I took a knife and I carefully went all around the edges to loosen it up so that the lady fingers weren't going to stick. And they still might, but, yep. Okay, we'll get a nice plate for that one. And for this, for a decoration, we're going to put a little bit of cocoa powder on top. And to build the lily, I made some chocolate curls. And I will do a um, video in the future, near future, on how to make chocolate curls. It's very simple. Put a nice big one in the middle. Got a few more. Let everybody have a little bite. Yum. <laughs> 